Um, uh, I thought I thought that uh, looking at today's program, you've um, the the humanities department here has been has done a really great job of uh, facilitating and crafting putting together so many really uh, interesting proposals. Um, and I thought that maybe um, to start us off this afternoon, um, just to give us a, 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 a big possibly a big picture framing on some of the issues that we discussed today. And I would also like to take the opportunity to thank the community represented here because uh, I understand that um, I, I hadn't known the context of the of the fifth humanity sharing session and if it's been going on for this many years, um, obviously you guys are really a very, um, um, yeah. So um, I speak to you as a geographer and SS person myself. Uh, so, um, some of the examples may be more from the geography side. Okay. <clears throat> Having said that, so let's uh, we'll begin with this um, thing here. Singapore is high above sea level. Um, this 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 was a this is a this was actually this yeah I I heard this in a well this was actually uttered by a secretary student and um, I thought this was very interesting because I it would. It, I think we need to, over the course of this afternoon, um, possibly we can think about how we unpack such statements and where these kinds of um, um, conceptions come from. So, um, okay, so the, this slide will probably separate us um, in terms of those of us from, of a certain vintage. If you've been in the service for long enough, you will recognize this sentence. <laughs> um, for those of you who have never seen this sentence before, then you are very, very young. Okay, so um, for those of you, for those of us who, okay, so Singapore separation from Malaysia was a disaster, yes. To what extent do you agree, EYA? Okay, so I was, I was in service at the time that this question came up, and uh, I was privileged to be one of the markers that year, and um, because I was one of the markers that year, um, it was interesting for us because it, this question really separated. Um, it it, it sort of illustrated a few things. Firstly, the students from the better schools, um, who had of course been very well trained and who had been, um, who had obviously been paying attention to their social studies teachers for the preceding two years, 2001, 2002. Um, did not know how to, could not really, yeah, so what they did was, as you probably know, what they ended up doing was they tried to twist the, they tried to twist the question to, to fit into the existing schema as to what the teachers had, been, what, what, that, what the teachers had taught them from 2001-2002. As a result, they actually ended up writing out of point. And these were the students from the better schools. But a lot of the students from the neighborhood schools who hadn't been paying attention for the past two thousand for the past, for the preceding two years, two thousand one, two thousand two, just sleeping right through their social studies uh, social studies lessons. They actually ended up doing very well. Why? Because they took the question literally and they answered to the point. Because they it, they they really couldn't remember anything from that sense, or they what they could remember they couldn't make sense of. So they just said, okay, so Singapore's separation from Malaysia was a disaster. Do I agree with it? Do I not agree with it? Here are my reasons. And they ended up doing very well. Do great. So what's my point? My point is that, <clears throat> so by the way, it's intuitions. I'm not institutions. Um, so my point is that sometimes, um, actually more, more frequently than, than, we, than we expect, when push comes to shove, intuitions may override rote memorization and learning. So sometimes all the years and effort that we put, and all the sweat, blood, and tears that we put into our lessons, as we know, can sometimes go to pot if, 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 if under exam conditions, the students get so stressed that they confuse this with that. And um, so what, what, what do they instinctually resort to? Whether uh, subconsciously they resort to what they intuitively feel about the, 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 top, the topic. Okay. 
Okay. So my point today is basically that I think it's very important to pay attention to these intuitions. Intuitions specifically with regards to our respective subject areas represented here. So intuitions in geography, intuitions in historiography, uh, intuitions in uh, towards the social, uh, it, well, social studies intuitions a bit hard to, but anyway. <clears throat> okay, so putting it a little bit more cheaply, um, um, I think early understanding is a term that many of us are familiar with, uh, but but if you guys want a cheap term, it's epistemological appropriation, which just tumbles off the tip of my tongue um, because I've been working in the university for 12 years. Okay, so um, but if you don't understand, uh, no problem if you don't like the term epistemological appropriation, which I did again. Um, just think about it as thinking like a, and in the, in the blank just apply your particular case. So thinking like a geographer, thinking like a historian, thinking like a social scientist, okay? So ultimately this has to be our end goal. Because if this is our end goal with regards to our students, then the instincts that kick in when they are under stress will be the appropriate instincts, okay? So this has to be our end goal. Well, of course, the, holy, the, if, the trick is how, 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 how to achieve that end goal. So, here, we, I, I, if you think about it, so we all, we all agree that this is a good big picture to, to, to aim for, right? And one sound way to aim for this good picture is through solid first principle understanding. Now this is, as you know, this is much, much easier to preach about than to actually enact in the classroom, okay? So, as you, as you go through the sessions today and as you reflect on them over the weekend, one, and if you have nothing better to do, although we do have better things to do, you could start thinking about what constitutes first principle understanding in your respective subject, okay? I think in the natural sciences it's pretty clear, but in, in the softer sciences, first principle understanding in the softer sciences is a little bit more nebulous, and it, it would be good for all of us as curriculum people to start thinking about that. Then, where do they, first principle understanding can often ground, be grounded upon conceptions and misconceptions, such as Singapore is high above sea level, okay? Um, and where do these misconceptions come from? You see, my point why I separate with high and near low is because very often in the classroom, in a context of 40 students, the most we can achieve is to surface our sayings or Mary's misconceptions about the topic. Very, very seldom do we have the time to actually unpack where these misconceptions come from. But if we don't unpack where these misconceptions come from, then no matter how much we try to drill them, they will still be having these inaccurate intuitions, which will get in the way of first principle understanding, which will get in the way of enduring understanding. Do you understand my point of the slide? Yeah? Okay. So basically, I'm trying to encourage us as a community to think about what undergirds the misconceptions. What are the kinds of intuitions that the students bring to our classroom? And how can we pay more attention to them? Okay? And of course, the problem is of course compounded because the intuitions are primarily derived from lived experience from the home environment. And you have a class of 40 different pupils, you have 42 different home environments. Okay? So, um, it's very, very difficult for us to unpack. But some of the schools uh, that I've been working with have been trying to make um, uh, inroads into this. So just to, uh, just to elaborate a little bit more. So what's the problem? The problem is these three, these four things. Uh, okay? There's the disconnect between the lived experience and the assessment goals. The assessment goals are one thing, but sometimes they don't align well with what the student is experiencing at home, and therefore the intuitions that the student brings to the classroom are not aligned with what what he or she is getting from the curriculum materials. Okay? That's one thing. Second thing is of course time of instructor, by which I mean a classroom of 40 people. The diversity of lived experience and test nature of intuitions. Intuitions by definition are subconscious. If I ask you to say, oh what's the intuition about whether it's gonna rain this afternoon? Of course the geographers will have slightly more things to say than maybe the historians. Uh, or maybe not, 
But anyway, uh, but the very fact that you express it out means it's no longer intuition. I mean, it's now, you know. So intuitions are very tested, uh, but they're very important because they inform our decision making. And they're very important because they, they influence how children respond to our lessons. Okay? So just some examples. Um, intuitions, how, how, how many surface intuitions in history? Uh, I am not a historian, as you know. So, uh, but I did manage to sit in one of the NIE uh, sessions, and they had this very interesting tool, which was basically a dissertation techniques, where they where they got students to be presented with a series of picture cards about events, and then in this particular case, to sort the picture cards according to how they think the 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 events were related. So you can order them, you can rank them, you can sort them. I thought this was a very interesting way to bring up students' historical intuitions. Intuitions in the social studies, um, um, uh, as the events of the past week have unfolded, um, I think the, more or less the, the thing speaks for itself. Huh? Because um, as in the event, in the in the weeks preceding Mr. Lee's passing, and in, the, in this particular week, we have seen a whole a whole range of uh, responses from social media um, and, 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 and from the mass media. And how do our students respond to what they're reading online, what they're uh, they watching on TV, what, 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 what they're getting on their phone? So um, a whole variety of responses. And th this, might be, this is a good, I mean, as I was sharing with some of you during the lunchtime, it's an exciting time to be a social studies teacher. So back to Singapore as high above sea level. So I asked the I asked student, why do you think Singapore is high above sea level? Yeah, do you want to try and, uh, we're not making fun of anybody, but basically his response is, Singapore does not experience flooding, so therefore Singapore is high above sea level. Okay? So um, I'm just saying that this, that this is the depth of the, some of the, but you see, we have to be alert to these things. Because all too often these, these these statements just come and go in the context of everyday discourse in the classroom. And then if you're not alert to them, they they, they, they fester and they grow over time, and then they grow from sec two to sec three to sec four. And then by the time they grow from sec three to sec four, and then they get to the prelims, they are very, very certain that Singapore has a high C level. And then, you know, it kind of goes haywire from there. So the thing is to nip it in the bud. Huh? But in order to get the bike, it's very difficult. So um, coming to my last couple of slides, um, <clears throat> I've, for the past uh, six years, I've been my team uh, at the NIE has been working with about 20 schools, primarily neighborhood schools uh, across Singapore in uh, all three academic streams, uh, NT, NA, and Express, in a variety of subjects. Uh, the Ministry of Education has been very pleased with us. They've given us our fourth tranche of funding, which means that any school that comes on board can do so for free over the next few years. Um, honestly, uh, and, and this, this has been validated both in terms of 21cc uh, disposition scores as well as academic scores. So MOE really is very keen on the program. They, they would like as many schools on board as to come. On. So if any of you are interested later, just let me know. And uh, the, we, we, uh, I'm, my team is happy to go down to your school and have a totally zero obligation for a uh, chat, initial chat with. So the only KPIs from your point of view if you come about the program is things which you are really used to doing, which is sharing your existing lesson uh, plans, your lesson resources, the kinds of things that you're doing right now. So it's really quite painless, okay? So um, so here, by the way, what you're seeing is we are seeing a group of Amokyo Sec students, Sec 3s, and instead of being presented with control lines and control maps uh, uh, fit or complete, meaning that here, if you see the lines looking this way, this is a spur. If you see the lines looking that way, that means it's a concave slope. And this is totally meaningless because they have nothing to ground it on. So what they have done instead is to go back to what John first used to do before GPS, which is actually to walk around in a, in a virtual landscape. And then they, they plot out on the graph paper the x and y coordinates. And each, each group is assigned a contour interval. And when you put all the graph paper together, you can actually see the, 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 the full contour map. So this way they are building up their, their topographical understanding from first principles. Um, okay, I don't know if this, uh, but I, honestly this is just uh, some 
unsolicited comments from the schools on some of the schools on my like, okay. So I don't want to bore you with all this, okay? Because just um, I don't want to come across as a salesman. And honestly, this is my last slide, okay? So uh, I told you I'll do it in 15 minutes, right? I'm a good teacher. I keep my time. Uh, so yeah, please feel free to contact uh, me or any of my team, and we'll be happy to. Uh, um, um, to, to walk the journey with you. And thank you very much. I really do have a really good sharing session.